the GSN Immigration YouTube channel. My name is Jules Mocho and I am a Senior Immigration Advisor at OIC Level 3. Today I'll be talking to you about the sole representative of Overseas Business Visa, also known as sole rep visa. So I'm going to take you through some of the requirements of this visa. The sole rep visa effectively allows for a foreign national who works for a foreign company outside of the UK to be able to set up a branch of that company in the UK. So it allows you, if you're already working for someone outside the UK and that company thinks that they may want to have a presence in the UK, it allows that company to send someone to the UK to obviously be their representative or in the UK. Now, the requirements of this visa uh, is for the person who will be coming to the UK to set up this branch uh, to have worked for that company in a senior capacity. So uh, either in a managerial level or some sort of a senior role with the foreign company. Um, and then when you come to the UK, your, your job or your main role will be to work for that new uh, branch that you've set up in the UK. Um, there is no a specific length of time that you should have worked for the current foreign company. It used to be 12 months, but they've sort of taken that away. But what you're looking for is genuineness of the role that you're coming to do in the UK. So the longer you've worked for the company outside the UK, the more they will think your, your role that you play with them and the fact that you want to come to the UK is genuine. What they don't want to see is that you're coming to the UK just for visa purposes. One of the other requirements to note is that you as the person coming to the UK to set up this branch should not be a majority shareholder of the foreign company. So if you own your own company outside the UK, you cannot come um, to the UK to set up this branch. It has to be someone else who owns less than 50% share of the company or who doesn't have a controlling majority in the company outside of the UK. And you should note that once you set up a branch in the UK, the main company still must remain outside of the UK and trading. Okay, so you cannot move the head of the, the, that main company to the UK. So you have a branch outside the UK, which is the head, the head of uh, the main company, and then you have a branch in the UK that you set up, um, and it must continue that way at least until the you know the individual who's setting up the branch has got indefinite leave in the UK. Um, another requirement uh, is that, of course, then you need to meet English language requirements. So speaking and listening English language at level A1, um, you, you and the company must have su uh, sufficient funds to be able to set up the company in the UK. There's no specific amount of money that is needed, but you will know how much that company will need uh, to, to set up that branch in the UK. And so that's something you need to consider when intending to set up a branch in the UK. So one of the things you should consider providing, which is not absolute for the visa, but is highly recommended as a business plan. So the business plan will be, will be able to inform the home office or the decision maker as to what your intentions are, how you're gonna make the business successful, um, why the UK, um, how much you're going to maybe spend to make the business a success. So you give them market analysis, of the area of work that you're looking to set up in the UK. So the business plan will really help your, your visa application to be successful because they will have a proper understanding of why you, why this business, why the UK. So something to really consider in adding as part of the requirements. Um, also, you can bring dependents to the UK as well. So you, uh, you can bring a partner or children under 18 to the UK under this uh, sole representative visa. Um, your children can, uh, study in the UK without having to pay fees. Uh, your partner can work for anyone they, they, they wish to work for. Uh, they don't have access to, to benefits, UK benefits, but you yourself who are the sole representative, you can only work for the company in which you've come to the UK to set up. So that's the limitations, but your partner can work for any company as well. Um, this visa is usually valid for three years if applied from outside of the UK. Um, and then when you've got the three years after that, you extend for a further two years, and then that leads to indefinite leave or permanent residency after five years or in the UK. And as well, uh, dependents will also be able to apply for indefinite leave after five years in the UK. Although the uh, sole representative visa is normally applied from outside of the UK, it is possible to switch inside the UK into this visa. Um, 
but it depending on your personal circumstances uh, we can advise better on whether you can switch in the uk or not uh, one of the other things to, to remember is that you will need to provide some form of funds either for yourself or any dependents you bring into the uk to show you can support yourself there's no specific amount but it's more looking at the adequate maintenance will be assessed so you know we can advise better on kind of what sort of figures you should be looking at for your for yourself or any dependents you may have um also the the fee for the visa if you were to apply from outside the uk is 610 pounds you will also of course have to pay the immigration health surcharge as well which is currently 624 per year but by the time you watch this it might be something different when you apply from inside the uk the fee is 704 pounds and again you will have to pay for uh for the immigration health surcharge as well same fee uh to consider these fees will have to be paid for every single member of the family that will be applying at the same time or at a later date so it should be noted that family can join you at the same time that you're applying for this visa to come to the uk or they can join you at a later date but the fees will remain the same that you will have to pay uh, as i mentioned earlier about um you get in permanent residency or indefinite leave in the uk it is possible after a year of holding that permanent residency in the uk that you can apply for a citizenship in the uk if you wish to do so um, but we will discuss more about citizenship in one of our next videos so depending on the nature of your business you will need to evidence the kind of funds that you'll need but there is no specific amount that you need to invest in your company so previous visas and current visas have certain specific amounts but so the one of the benefits of the sole representative visa is that there is no specific requirements it's only what is needed to improve your business and set up your business so the process in times for this visa from outside the uk is advertised as three weeks but realistically it could go on to about two months so uh, be prepared that it could take longer due to the fact that it is a complex visa and there's a lot of assessments that need to be made by the you know the decision maker um, in the uk it's supposed to be eight weeks but also it could take a little bit longer than that um, so the process in times for this visa from outside the uk is advertised as three weeks but realistically it could go on to about two months so uh, be prepared that it could take longer due to the fact that it is a complex visa and there's a lot of assessments that need to be made by the you know the decision maker um, in the uk it's supposed to be eight weeks but also it could take a little bit longer than that thank you for listening i am going to take some questions now Great, thank you so much, Jules, for this um, useful information about Soul Rep Visa. Um, one of the questions I have is from a lady. She said she owns 50% of the shares of the company she runs overseas, um, and she wants to find out if her husband can come to the UK on the Soul Rep Visa to open the branch. Well, it is possible for her husband to come to the UK as a sole representative, as long as he doesn't own the other half of the share of the company. Um, and furthermore, the difficulty will be that she herself will not be able to come to the UK uh, as a dependent of this visa. So as one of the requirements, you can't bring your dependent if they own a majority of the company. So that's something to consider when looking at this. But one of the, the biggest issues would be the genuineness of the company because the Home Office do not want to see uh, companies being created or companies being run and then sole representative visa being used as a form of getting a visa to the UK. So it's, it should be, they want to see that the role is genuine and that the creation of this branch in the UK is genuine. And when you start sending family or friends to the UK on this visa, the Home Office may question the genuineness of this, um, of this whole visa application. Sure. Um, another question, very similar nature. Um, a gentleman says he employs his uncle and he's on a senior position in the company. Can he still send him to the UK to open the branch, although he's a relative? Yes, he can send uh, his uncle to the UK on the sole representative visa. It is definitely very it is possible. Um, but of course, it could also raise, raise further questions about genuineness as well, in terms of the genuineness of this application and this branch creation in the UK. Uh, when family is involved so you you know just like the lady before you will always need to have a good explanation as to why the uk why this individual um, is coming to set up a branch in the uk sure 
Um, a question related to English language, um, one of the most frequently asked question. What is the level of English one needs to do to be able to get this visa? Unlike many other visas, the English language requirement is actually A1, which is the lowest level, and it's speaking and listening. Some other work and business related visas require B1, but this one only requires A1 level, speaking and listening. Wow, that's great. Um, another question um, from a potential um, sole rep, um, visa hold, uh, applicant saying he's got a previous visa refusal under visit visa category. Can that have any negative impact on this application? So previous uh, refusal on the visit visa category or any other kind of visa can potentially have a negative impact on the sole representative visa application, but it all depends on the reason for the refusal. So for example, if it was to do with um, providing false information or false documents, that would definitely um, hinder any future applications because it would be very difficult for the decision maker to decide whether, because you may have tried to lie once, whether you're doing it again, or you've accidentally provided false documents before, whether you, you're not doing it again. So it can cause a potential issue, but it all depends on each individual's uh, specific situation. So we'd have to assess the refusal letter and assess your personal situation before being able to properly answer that. Great, thank you so much. Um, another question is about the nature of the business. Can any business open a branch in the UK or is there a list of any specific business only those can? There are actually no limitations on the type of business you can open under the sole representative visa. Again, it's down to your business plan and being able to inform the decision maker what is the purpose of this business, why the UK, what value you're going to add to it, um, and then you'll assess whether it's, it's a genuine business idea and a business plan and a genuine reason for being in the UK. So it really, is, is, it's any idea is fair, fair game, really. Great, sky is the limit. Yes. Awesome. Um, last question for today, please. A couple has asked um, regarding their children. They said they understand um, on this visa, their children are entitled to free schooling in a pri uh, public school in the UK. However, if they can afford um, to send their children to private schools, um, is that okay or will there be a problem? No, there should be no issue in able, you know, to be able to send your children to private school in the UK. As long as you can pay the fees, then there, there should be no issues at all. Brilliant. Um, I would like to thank you for today's vlog. Um, it was really useful um, and uh, a lot of information in there. And we see you in the next vlog. Thank you very much. See you all next time.